to The Hookup on Music with your host, Tony Burt. And I enter the stage. Hello, everybody. My name is Tony Burt, and I am your host tonight for The Hookup on Music and every week. And we are at episode 94. Another one, another one, another one, another one. And it's always a good time to be joined tonight because, well, we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. We're going to be digging into new albums. We're going to dig into some old albums. We're going to dig into some great bands. We're going to dig into some classics. Uh, We've just got so much. We're going to honor a legend. Why wait any longer? Let's get started. Uh, Again, I appreciate you being here. It's always, always a pleasure to have you joining me and talking music. Or if you're listening about music, I do appreciate it. Um, Thank you for also joining in on anything else that's going on on the Sadistic Penguin Studios uh, YouTube channel. Got a lot of good stuff. Got an awesome draft show. Just had a couple great episodes. And later... If you are listening to this right as it is released at 7, um, we got the at the show digging into some great football flicks. So, But uh, tonight on the Hookup on Music, we have got a lot of good stuff. We've got a lot of new releases that have been um, gracing our presence here within the recent uh, days, uh, including today. Uh, being the 15th of November, right in the heart of November, Getting so close to having a lot of turkey and stuffing. So let's get stuffed with some really great music. Um, I like the way I said that. But uh, let's go into all of this. And let's get uh, started with our very, very first new release. Just released today. And that is Linkin Park's brand new album. uh, From Zero. Very interesting. Uh, Newest release since their uh, last album. Um, Which is crazy that how time flies for a band. because. they were saying uh, the last album was going to be their last album from 2017, One More Light. But uh, from zero, they are coming back, which means they're starting from the beginning. We've already talked about the uh, Emily Armstrong joining the band, but let's dig into this new album. Only 31 minutes long, kind of short. But that being said, uh, 11 tracks. And if you are a fan of that classic Linkin Park sound, um uh, look no further in songs like heavy is the crown cut the bridge stained and two-faced i'm um, digging into this album pretty quickly today um found a lot a lot of good things if you're looking to rehash the amazing years if you find them to be amazing of the uh early uh, 2000s uh late 90s saw lincoln park at ozfest which was a really great time but chester bennington is no longer in the band it's kind of odd, you know, um, I was always kind of curious of what it would feel like when Back in Black was released after the sad passing of ACDC's Bond Scott and Brian Johnson um, taking over the helm. Well, I guess this is about as close as we're going to get at this point. And uh, honestly, it's a little weird. It's, you know, I mean, a band like Linkin Park, I guess we're pretty big. But to be fair, Unfortunately, when uh, uh, Chester uh, passed away, it wasn't like they were at the top of their game, which is sad because we like our artists at the top of their game. And uh, But if you're looking for a little nostalgia, a little recreation, a little uh, new stuff, a new female singer, you're just looking for different, different things. They got just announced a huge uh, world tour, which they're going to be uh, heading into the Chicago United Center coming up in august but uh if you're looking to dig back into those 2000s dig into this new album um you know over each other there's you got slow songs you got really really heavy songs that take up things like paper cut from the first album but uh really interesting is just again the way that a band moves on and lincoln park has moved on i'm looking for something a little new and a little bit different um this uh musical uh thanksgiving season suki waterhouse um is dropping some really really great tracks um she's also an actress but uh the song faded is really really good super sad is really really good off her newest album which uh came out september 13th memoir of a sparkle muffin which is a, another interesting album title um but again suki waterhouse um very very good voice excellent 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 uh song structure 
and she's got the tour coming up for the Sparkle Muffin Tour, which is very, very interesting. She also performed as an opening act on one of Taylor Swift's Eras Tour at the Wembley Stadium, which is, uh, I guess, pretty huge these days to be opening up for her. But uh, again, check out Suki Waterhouse's new album. It is actually very entertaining and very good, um, if not for anything more, but you just keep repeating the name Sparkle Muffin, Sparkle Muffin, Sparkle Muffin until you have a good time but uh also at the same time when is the last time you heard something from franz ferdinand um a band that honestly is about to release their sixth studio album um sixth studio album interesting because these guys have been around for a little bit of time their first album was in 2004 and to have a sixth studio album in 21 years pretty interesting um but you know what else is interesting? Let's hear a cut from the album. With a plastic carrier bag in each hand. Audacious is the uh, first single from the new album. And if you are into Franz Ferdinand and you like that guitar jangle in which they do, it is very, 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 um, well, uh, interesting in the way that goes. Um, because they really, really do it well. Um, uh, they also have a new drummer. Audrey Tate is on the drums on this new album. Um, Paul Thompson, who had been with the band 22 to 2021, um, sadly is no longer with the band. Only band members that are left from that original um, band is uh, bassist Bob Hardy and, of course, lead vocals, lead guitarist Alice Capranos, which, again, the new album, The Human Fear, interesting to hear how it sounds. Um, you're hearing how it, uh, really, because Capranos describes it as a fear of social isolation, fear of leaving an institution and the fear of leaving or staying in a relationship. Very interesting. If you are actually uh, dealing with any of these, these albums seems to be a good jangly, good time with some really good guitar work Um, past albums by these guys, uh, definitely are, uh, always ascending their last album from 2017. A really, really excellent, excellent piece. You're looking for, uh, this is one of the first bands that I remember listening to, especially in the new alternative era, that really put a good dance into some of their tunes. So uh, definitely check out this new album, because I don't think you're going to be disappointed in, well, to say the least, because we don't get disappointed when we listen to Franz Ferdinand, because they're a pretty good band. Um but uh, recently, we uh, had to, again, endure some really, really, really big sadness in the musical world. And uh, the sadness being the passing of one Quincy Jones, you know, a man who has uh, just piled up the accolades, 28 Grammy Awards, uh, Primetime Emmy Award, and a Tony Award, which is uh, really awesome to go along with nominations for seven Academy Awards and four Golden Globe Awards. You know, you talk about a legend born in Chicago, Illinois, uh, passed away November 3rd, but composing so many great, great, great soundtracks from everything from the In the Heat of the Night, which uh, we have talked about before on um, the uh, one of the amazing videos we have put out on the uh, Sadistic Penguin Studios uh, YouTube channel, but also just uh, behind the, the board on just so many classics like Thriller. I mean, you talk about a, an excellent, excellent, excellent album. Thriller is uh, definitely an album that I think is, uh, well, one that you definitely, uh, well, probably have heard something from. Um, but also being a part of just so many other different, 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 different things is, is, is cool because honestly, Quincy is one of the best. And honestly, if you could hear any story of the, uh, just, how he got his start and all of the the influence in which he is credited definitely do some time and uh do that but uh, rest in peace quincy jones definitely um your production work is bar none some of the best that uh anyone's ever heard um but in a more of a heavy routine exodus uh, a really 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 awesome band that i am shocked that we have not uh, talked about on this show at all, which is crazy because we should be talking about these guys quite a lot. Um, but again, from Richmond, California, starting in 1979. Um, but 
all the way performing till now, a couple stops in 93 and 98, but till right now, they are just going and going and going and going and putting out really, 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 really great, great, great uh, stuff. Uh, Steve Souza, the lead vocalist, 86 to 93, 2002 to 2004, and 2014 to 20. Uh, present Gary Holt, who we've been talking about a lot, is the oldest uh, member, or an, I'm sorry, drummer Tom Hunting is the oldest member, but Gary Holt is the second. Uh, Tom Hunting is started in '79, and Gary Holt '81. But uh, so many awesome members have passed through Exodus. Uh, Paul Bailoff, lead vocalist, sadly, until he passed away, was really, really awesome. Um, you may have heard of Kirk. Han I was froze for a couple minutes, of course. Technical difficulties. This time, power went out, but I'm back. So let's get back to what we were talking about, which was the amazing Exodus, which, again, loaded with, like, as I was saying, great, great, great bands, amazing, amazing artists, just a really, 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 really excellent, excellent, um, just a... a Everything that they do is that I've listened to has just been um, top notch, and honestly, should be uh, hailed as top as well. Some of the greats like Megadeth and Slayer and Metallica. Yeah, they took their guitar player from this band, and uh, they took it. They, he left and they had a better career in Metallica. But that being said, um, Exodus is always a really, really excellent, decent jam, and definitely um, worth the time and the effort if you definitely get any of them. Um, recently, um, just, uh, came through town to, uh, Joliet and uh, by yesterday, I mean, uh, well, um, yesterday they played three songs from Bounded by Blood, three songs from Fabulous Disaster, three songs from Blood in, two songs by Blood and Blood Out, two songs by Person and Grotto, two from Temple of the Damned, one to Pleasure of the Flesh, 
and one of one of the coolest album titles, Shovel Headed Kill Machine, which is definitely uh well what you would like when you are uh doing anything is you would like a, a kill machine. Um, but uh definitely is cool is uh a band that is still going out there and touring and touring and touring and we've talked about it quite a bit on here when you can go and tour and uh bonded by blood is just a really again recently we talked about really crazy looking album covers Ooh, that uh, original studio album cover is definitely crazy and it's definitely definitely weird looking um but uh take some time and dig into accidents um if you were able to get out to the uh show in joliet at the forge let us know what you thought of that show because a lot of people were reaching out to me and telling me that I missed out, which it seems like, again, I've missed out, which I am really, 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 really trying not to miss out on too many shows going out in the um, future. But uh, if you haven't listened to Bounded by Blood, do that. Or Pleasures of the Flesh, a really awesome cover where they're all just sitting at a bar, which uh, Steve Setrozusa, uh, who is the lead uh, vocalist of the band currently, and um, was the lead singer from 86 to 94. Just a really, 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 really good vocalist um, for this band. Um, he uh, also uh, was the lead singer of a band, um, Legacy, which you may not be familiar with that band, but you may be familiar with the heavy metal band that they morphed into, which was the band Testament. So please uh, check out these and check out uh well so much more good stuff by exodus because there are still putting out quality work not just these uh last albums but uh even uh some uh some of the more uh newer stuff has been really really good that they've been putting out so um you know persona non grata from 2021 awesome album cover and to say the least and uh you know, it's cool because Gary Holt has commitments with Slayer, but he also has commitments with Exodus. Talk about an oh, amazing life. <clears throat> Having commitments with both of these bands. You definitely just can't um, deny the awesomeness of Exodus. We all love Exodus around here. Dig into some more Exodus, please. We love digging into Exodus. Um, we also uh, been a while since we dug into some Everclear. Someone had suggested that we go back and give a second spin to so much of the Afterglow, which is uh, an album that was a favorite of mine back in the 90s, in the middle of me listening to Pantera and all the heavy stuff. In uh, 97, I'm also listening to so much for the Afterglow because I liked Everclear's album that came before so much after it. Uh, so much for the afterglow, um, which was uh, definitely, definitely, definitely an, uh, just, a, just a band at their sparkle and fade, a band at their uh, just a really big peak. Um, it's a departure from the band's uh, punk rock and grunge sound, but there is still some of that on here. But the production value of this uh, with producer Art Alexis, Neil Avron, and Lars Fox produces a really great soundscape uh, leading off with the uh, first track on the album. So much for the Afterglow, um, uh, a track that just really glistens and, and glides as the band goes. Here's a live version of it. <laughs> um really really uh our alexis on this on this album um it being suggested again to me i remember the first track everything to everyone's got a really like a kind of a carnival sound in the background i will buy you a new life just a, a really good pop song but uh there's an instrumental el distorto d melic decada which is going to kind of make you feel like well maybe there are a little bit uh Still got that grunge deep down inside. The albums that come after this definitely depart to more of a Beach Boys type of pop vibe. But here, again, so much uh, for the Afterglow. Just really, really gets started and really, really, really uh, takes off into a, a, a stratosphere that is really great and ends with uh, uh, Why Don't do, uh, Like a California King. Um or that contains also the hidden track, Hating You for Christmas. Um, but again, really, really awesome stuff here. Um, Father of Mine um, is a track that it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, could seem a little bit cheesy. 
But to be fair, when you're listening to this song in 1997 and you're only 13 or 14, it has some pretty meaningful lyrics. Um, the album as a whole, though, is a really good listen, a smooth listen. It's got rocking songs. It's got songs that are a little bit more uh, in the pop variety. But overall, just a really, really great, great, great album and uh, really worth checking out. So if you have not checked it out or it's been a long time, I think it would definitely be worth your time doing that. Um, not digging into him a lot tonight, but uh, if you haven't sat down and listened to some Carter Buford, uh, you may not like the band, and slowly I'm trying to weave some of their stuff in here, but the drummer of the Dave Matthews Band is one of the best drummers of, honestly, uh, the last 30, 40 years. Um, if you can't tell, just buy the picture of his drum set, not to mean anybody's size of their drum set means what a good player they are. He is an amazing, amazing player. Um, before these crowded streets, I'm just going to keep saying that to you. Check this album out if you want to try to block out Dave's voice, but it does do a very good job um, accompanying the music on this album. Um, definitely a lot of different sounds. There are songs that are a little bit more proggy, to say the least, and there are some songs that are definitely got some really good beats, and they're all because of Carter. Carter is the heartbeat of the Dave Matthews band, so please take some time. Please uh, listen to a little bit of Carter. Uh, please, um, even if you aren't a fan of the band, um, you won't be disappointed. He is an excellent, excellent, excellent musician and deserves um, everybody to listen to him at any chance that they get. Oh, wow. Uh, recently, we love to dig into these. These are always definitely a good old time here on The Hookup. It is another list. Um, that has been released and um i wanted to really dig into this with you and it is some great performances by uh on the saturday night live we're not going to number any of these we're just going to talk about some of them if you're looking on the screen currently uh the amazing queen played saturday night live i don't know if you're familiar with that but when you really think about something like queen um playing um saturday night live you got to say to yourself that's actually pretty cool you know, because Queen is one of the biggest rock bands of all time. And it just shows that Starry Night Live is able to get some of the biggest rock bands of all time um, in so many, so many different ways. But some of the best um, Starry Night Live um, performances, you know, you may say the Blues Brothers, Soul Man, which was an excellent, excellent uh, performance in, from the 1970s, 1978 uh november 18th to be exact was an excellent 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 uh performance and an excellent kickstart um what i like is when you're starting to dig into uh that those early 90s okay what grunge bands showed up smashing pumpkins showed up doing chura brock okay um cork and even flashing some devil horns at the end of the song um host was christian slater for that one but that was october 30th 1993 Excellent job, Saturday Night Live, booking the Smashing Pumpkins the day before Saturday Night Live. I'm sure. I'm sure I watched that one live. I cannot tell you I remember that one. But uh, what I do remember is a little Cypress Hill. <laughs> right around the same year earlier, uh, because honestly, Cypress Hill ain't going out like that. Is definitely an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, thing. Um some uh, definitely, definitely uh, things went down, though, for this performance is that Cypress Hill was never allowed to come back because the uh, DJ lit up something while he was performing that he wasn't supposed to light up. And unfortunately, they were banned from the show. But, you know, as you dig, 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 dig deeper, um, John Belushi, who was part of the Blues Brothers, went to bat for a band called Fear, who did Beef Bologna uh bologna baloney i don't know really what you want to say but what i will say is that uh fear on saturday night live right around the same time as queen you definitely are saying that uh saturday night live had the chops to get some really excellent excellent uh performances out of a lot a lot of people and uh definitely never was uh too shy to try to do that because i think that was always the point um for um Saturday Night Live was to just try to get into some of the best performances of all time, you know, getting the Stones in 78 um, was interesting because they performed Shattered, but they partied all week before the performance. Um, 
spending uh, lots and lots of time with John Belushi, a lot, a lot of late nights, which is interesting because, you know, they still showed up just as the Talking Heads did in 79 um, when they did uh, Take Me to the River, which is honestly a very memorable performance for me. Um, remember that one quite a lot um, just because it has popped up in a lot of different uh, places. But if you're a fan of hip hop in 86, uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner was the host. And who was the musical guest? Run DMC doing Hit It and Run, which is uh, a one-of-a-kind performance that definitely deserves um, some, 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 uh, some, some attention. Rock Lobster in 80 with Terry Gar hosting by the B-52s. Um, during the breakdown, Schneider and Cindy Wilson were on the floor with uh, Strickland crouched behind his drum kit. And he kept playing. Very interesting. Um, to hear the stories of some of these tracks of some of the best performances of all time. Um, Tom Petty doing free fall. And that's great. Um, George Harrison and Paul Simon doing homeward bound. I mean, is that for real? Two guys that were uh, great at harmonizing, get together and harmonize together. Um, which is just honestly amazing in 76 to be able to have, uh, par a par to pair these two together just as was uh rage against the machine with their protesting of hanging his flags upside down on their amps uh infuriating uh the creators and unfortunately they were also um not allowed to come back anymore um some of the best though um uh, is if you really get a chance is um which is crazy to think about. In 1979, December 15th, David Bowie gets to come on the show, and he does uh, The Man Who Sold the World, which, of course, you know that is the Nirvana song, but Pearl Jam's been on there. Tina Turner's been on there. So many people have been on the great Saturday Night Live. You know, who knows if good performances are still to come. There are still performances that do eke out that I see that are actually really, really good. Um, some people say Chappelle Rowan had a performance recently that was really good, but, uh, honestly check into this because you're really not going to be uh, disappointed if you sit down and go on YouTube or anywhere and try to check out any of these performances. Um, just like you won't be, uh, disappointed if you sit down and listen to the amazing voice of Mary J. Mary J. Belige. <laughs> You know, going back to the uh, great Quincy Jones, you know, uh, creator of Smooth, when you think of uh, a female artist who just delivers the Smooth, uh, Mary J. Blige is a huge, huge, um, huge in the department, you know, often referred to as the queen of hip hop and soul, queen of R&B. Blige has won uh, nine Grammy Awards, Primetime Emmy Award, four American Music Awards, and a whole lot of other awards, include 12 Billboard Music Awards, Billboard Icon Award. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, body of work. Okay. Um, you may not believe this, but she has 15 albums, Gratitude being the most recent album, um, which is uh, actually released today, which is really just amazing that uh, she has come all the way to this album 15, which is just loaded with a fabulous is on one track. Jada Kiss is on a track. But Fat Joe's on a track on this new album. I have not dug into it, but uh, digging into some of her uh, past albums, 1992's What's the 411? I mean, you're talking about an album that has, uh, well, um, sold triple platinum, which is three point, and it's actually at this point, 3.5 million copies, but loaded with good stuff. Um, Intro Talk with Busta Rhymes is a great song. Real Love, Great You Remind Me, My Love. But you don't have to take my time, any time, or any, any really fear harder effort to real realize the uh, power of the amazing um mary j blige i mean she has lots and lots of power and she has lots and lots of uh, style in her in her voice and her tone so i mean if it's been a long long time and you haven't listened to my life in a while um again you are not going to be uh disappointed at all okay um because she's just really, really, really good musician and really deserves a little bit, especially if you're looking for a little bit of a change of pace, you like a little bit of maybe of a little bit of a, something with uh, 
a little bit of some good beats she is going to deliver and um really has no problems with delivering at all just like modest mouse has no problems delivering um at all um on an album that they are currently uh celebrating uh good news for the people who love bad news has it been a while since you listened to this album i think it's time we get it out of the old shed and and dig into it for a couple minutes here and see see what makes this uh such a great 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 album and an album that honestly uh is uh well celebrating um 20 years um which is probably honestly one of my favorite albums the world at large is an excellent 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 uh opener just the way the songs flow into each other and you start to get deeper into the album ocean breeze salty dig your grave bury me with it dance hall bukowski devil's workday satin in a coffin love all of these tracks um one of my favorite tracks is the last track the good times are killing me because honestly sometimes it feels like they are um but the truth is is that that's what's great about these tracks is that float on all of them all together piece together a, a a excellent excellent album with isaac brock on the vocals they're celebrating this right now okay if you get an opportunity and you're able to see one of these modest mouth celebrations that they are uh, going around and they are touring um Please, 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 please let us know. Um, We are looking to uh, see um, what they are, uh, you know, what they're doing on this tour. And we want to hear if you are getting out there what uh, they're doing. And they're honestly uh, getting uh, ready to, uh, I mean, if you got some time, they're actually getting ready. Sadly, wow you know what's so crazy is that i was like i heard that they were coming soon and i had not done uh too much of a a set list but it looks like i missed out on two shows last night exodus and then unfortunately the modest mouse show which it looks like they played the whole album and then they played a second full uh set which had tracks from uh no one's first and your next the golden casket and the moon in antarctica which is 21 songs also mad because it looks at the bottom. Cowboy Dan was written on the set list, but not played. But again, man, you gotta listen to this album. I don't, I can't believe I missed that. That is something that I am disappointed in in live time. But you know what's gonna cheer me up a little bit? A little Lyle Love It. Um, I like this song a lot. I had a pony, I'd ride him on my boat, and we could all go. Very, very interesting is one Lyle Lovett, and interesting is always really good. I love interesting. Um, I love his his songwriting. I love his voice. I love just him as just a, he's a, he's they call him a, a like a, a American country singer, but uh, it's not really. It's kind of kind of it's, it's like folksy. It's it's a little bit all all a little bit over. How I first heard of Lyle Lovett was his uh, marriage to. Um, julia roberts which was a very interesting pairing but uh he's got a song uh my spouse has a song called cowboy dan and uh, i love its first album he has a song called cowboy man but again um ben skill played on that first album um but uh, lyle lovett's always been known as a great 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 songwriter that track you heard there was the first track off of his second album if i had a boat um the great lynn um um Lynn from uh Lynn Braymeyer from uh I'm messing everything up tonight and um XRT definitely was a fan of that track so a lot of love it's another one if you can just sit down put the feet back let us know what you think wow what a show tonight folks we have made it we thank you so much for joining us it is always a blast to go through some of the greatest albums bands artists Tonight we talked about Bowie, we talked about Exodus, we had a little bit of a hiccup, but you know what's great is that we stuck around and we stuck through it, and I just want to thank you so much for listening to this show. Um, We are going to keep doing this, and we're going to keep having a good time. We're going to see who we pick up along the way, see who wants to join us, see who wants to buy a boat with us and sail around and talk about some tunes. So if you are listening, um, thank you so much. Please check out the new At The Show podcast, which will be on later tonight if you're listening here at 7. If not, go back and check that out. We're talking about some great football movies. Uh, As stated before, check out. uh, uh, It's getting drafty in here. Great, great show. Um, Also, 
check out some of those articles on the sadistic penguin studios.com um buy some amazing gear we got some great bear shirts that are uh, just making us uh, feel better about the whole sadness in which is the chicago bears so everyone out there have a really really great night thank you so much my name is tony this is the hookup on music and we will definitely see you again next week so until that time everybody take care thank you for listening please look out for the audio version wherever you jam 